Transanal Minimally Invasive Surgery, or TAMIS, is a technique that is used to excise rectal neoplasms. Here, we present a systematic approach for partial proctectomy. This is a case of a 44-year-old female with a history of colon cancer in both parents. A screening colonoscopy revealed two polyps. A small sigmoid adenoma was resected with biopsy forceps. However, the rectum contained a large circumferential endoscopically unresectable lesion. The patient had no gastrointestinal symptoms and did not complain of rectal pain. Her past medical history includes hyperlipidemia, bipolar disorder, and hypothyroidism. On physical examination, her abdomen was benign. Digital rectal exam revealed a posterior lateral tumor 6 centimeters from the anal verge. This mass was soft and mobile. Repeat endoscopy demonstrated a large circumferential mass involving the lower valve of Houston and extending to the middle valve. Endorectal ultrasound showed a T0 N0 lesion and pathology was benign. This endorectal ultrasound image demonstrates no invasion by the mass. Endoscopic images show the circumferential mass with the distal rectum spared as demonstrated on retroflexion. Based on the benign nature of this lesion, the decision was made to perform an excision using the TAMIS technique. A balloon occlusion device is constructed using an endoscopic dilation catheter and an anal manometry balloon. A transanal port is secured within the rectum and the balloon occlusion device is inflated proximal to the lesion. Multiple marks are made circumferentially around the lesion using the cautery device. The harmonic dissector used during the remainder of the procedure could not make lasting marks on the mucosa due to the large amount of mucus produced by the mass. The marks are used as a guide throughout the excision to maintain a proper margin. The ultrasonic dissector produces vapor that is thinner and dissipates more rapidly than the smoke produced by cautery. Utilizing the jaws of the dissector, along with the pneumodissection created by the CO2 insufflation, a full thickness resection of the involved rectum is begun. Counter-traction is maintained while performing the anterior dissection. A strip of uninvolved mucosa is seen at the bottom of the screen. This tissue was helpful in maintaining our orientation throughout the procedure. The occlusion catheter minimizes fluctuations in the pneumorectum and also clearly demonstrates the location of the bowel lumen. The remaining attachments are taken with the dissector and the specimen is removed. The proximal extent of the resection was quite high in the rectum and the abdominal cavity was entered at the level of the peritoneal reflection. The uterus is seen clearly at this point. Fortunately, pneumorectum was maintained and the defect was closed using the automatic suture device. Once the peritoneal defect is repaired, the proximal rectum is located and brought into view. The 12 o'clock position is located and the reconstruction is begun using the automatic suture and knot tying devices. During our hand-sewn coloanal anastomoses, we use a method involving cardinal points. The 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock and 9 o'clock positions are located and sutures are placed proximal to distal at these locations. 
a modification of this technique is utilized here. However, rather than running each quadrant, all sutures are placed in an interrupted fashion. The automatic suture and knot forming devices allow the anastomosis to be created quickly, translating into less time under general anesthesia for the patient. The strip of uninvolved mucosa, seen earlier in this presentation, is excised at this point to allow for the completion of the circumferential end-to-end -end anastomosis. With the additional tissue excised, the 6 o'clock position is located and a suture is placed. In using this system of cardinal points, we ensure that the proper orientation of the proximal bowel is maintained and that no twists occur at the level of the anastomosis. We continue circumferentially, placing figure of eight sutures to fill in the gaps and ensure that the closure is airtight. The suture device allows full thickness bites to be taken of the rectal wall and is also able to work in small spaces at difficult angles. The anastomosis is created with a monofilament absorbable suture. Over time, the small metal clips left by the knot forming device will be passed through the patient's rectum as the sutures dissolve. The completed anastomosis is seen here. Due to the complexity of this resection and our entry into the abdominal cavity, we elected to perform a laparoscopic exploration. Three 5 mm cannulas were utilized during this portion of the procedure. The balloon tipped ports prevent movement of the cannulas during re entry of instruments. Seen here is our closure of the peritoneal reflection. The dissection visualized at this point is the same as would be seen during a laparoscopic low anterior resection. The air seen here is a result of the pneumodissection obtained during the tamis resection. The uterus seen earlier through the peritoneal defect is visualized in its usual orientation. A leak check is performed by insufflating air into the rectum with a proctoscope while the anastomosis is submerged in saline. No air bubbles are seen, signifying an intact suture line. The port sites are closed at the conclusion of the procedure. This patient was discharged on post-operative day number four with no complications and normal bowel function. The final pathology was benign and the proximal and distal resection margins marked here by arrows on the open specimen were free of tumor. Serial sectioning of the specimen was performed and microscopic images again demonstrate confinement of this lesion to the mucosa. This case involved the use of balloon occlusion, ultrasonic dissection, and automatic suture and knot forming devices. This systematic approach to TAMIS allows even complex circumferential lesions to be excised in a safe and efficient manner.